Dirty dealings, corporate battles, consumer woes. This is Evening Five. Capital A will dispose of its airline businesses to AirAsia X for an undisclosed amount as part of a consolidation plan. This involves the transfer of all short-haul businesses in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia and the Philippines to AAX, which currently operates only mid-haul flights. According to Capital A's chief, Tan Sri Tony Fernandez, the consideration will be negotiated at a later date in both cash and shares, with official agreements expected to be signed within the next two weeks. Once the transfer is completed. Capital A will continue to operate four businesses, namely Teleport, Santan, Big Pay and Asia Digital Engineering, focusing on serving its existing customer base in these markets. AAX will undergo a rebranding process and become known as Air Asia Aviation Group while maintaining its current headquarters at Red Q at KLIA Terminal 2. Capital A will move its headquarters to Damansara Heights. Fernandez said the plan will help Capital A raise funds for business expansion, adding that the group has been engaging committed investors who have expressed a strong preference for a pure aviation play. The MACC intends to call in a former Prime Minister and individuals who served as his aides during his tenure in relation to investigations into 700 million ringgit worth of government publicity spending in 2020 to 2022. News reports quoting Chief Commissioner Tansri Azambaki said the agency is looking at no fewer than four individuals, including the ex Prime Minister, who will be called in very soon, sometime between this week and the next. Malaysia saw three Prime Ministers in the period namely Tun Dr. Made Mohammad, who served from May 2018 up until February 2020, Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin, who took over until August 2021, and his successor, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, up till November 2022. The investigation will focus on how government funds were spent and which companies they went to. For now, the MACC is questioning just one ex-Prime Minister. The agency launched a probe into the matter after Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim made a statement on it in the Dewan Rakyat last November. Anwar had said 500 million was earmarked during Muhyiddin's tenure while the balance 200 million was utilised during Ismail Sabri's time. Individuals selected to chair the boards of federal statutory bodies will undergo scrutiny by both the police and the MACC in line with a newly established guideline for the management of these agencies. The Prime Minister's office announced today that the Special Cabinet Committee on National Governance had unanimously agreed to adopt the new guideline, replacing the outdated General Circular Letter No. 3 of 1998. Under the updated guideline, the board of statutory bodies will participate in a dedicated Program. Additionally, the role of internal audit departments across federal statutory bodies, including companies and corporations, will be reinforced. The PMO said periodic reports on the management and governance of these organizations will be submitted to the Prime Minister through the statutory body system. It also revealed that a new format for members of the administration and parliamentary lawmakers to declare their assets is expected to be presented in the upcoming cabinet meeting. Kananga Investment Bank has deemed the unconditional mandatory takeover offer by Saim Darby for the remaining shares in UMW Holdings as not fair but reasonable. It said in an independent advice circular that the offer price of 5 ringgit per share represents a discount of 60.8 sen to 1 ringgit 017 sen or about 10.84 to 16.9 percent to the estimated value of between 5 ringgit 608 sen and 6 ringgit 017 sen per UMW share derived from from the sum of parts valuation methodology. Still, it said the offer is reasonable considering the premium of up to 46.11% over the last traded market price of UMW shares as at August 23, 2023 being the last trading date prior to the signing of the share purchase agreement and the five-day, one-month, three-month, six-month, one-year and three-year volume weighted average market prices up to and including the date the deal was sealed. Kananga IB also highlighted that Saim Darby does not intend to maintain UMW's listing status and that the offer is an opportunity for shareholders to realise their investment. Who 
Boost Holdings and RHB Banking Group have received official approval from Bank Negara Malaysia and the Finance Ministry to commence operations as a digital bank with effect from January 15, 2024. The consortium partners said this makes Boost Bank the first primarily Malaysian-owned digital lender designed to meaningfully address financial inclusion gaps for the underserved and unserved. Next is the alpha testing phase involving employees, family, friends and a selected group of customers. Boost Bank is led by CEO Fozia Amanula, who is currently also the deputy CEO of Boost Credit and formerly CEO of Alliance Islamic Bank. She leads an experienced digital bank team encompassing expertise across technology, information security, product, risk and compliance, and more, leveraging fintech talent from Boost, banking expertise from RHB, and new capabilities from the wider industry. The digital bank consortium, in which Boost holds 60% equity and RHB the remaining 40%, percent was among the five successful licensed applicants announced by Bank Nagara Malaysia in April 2022.